What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. I'm here in Hammerdown Motorsports Garage. We got the truck above me on the lift. Steve's over here somewhere. Oh yeah, brother. There he is. First and truck on the lift, so. Is it? Yeah. No way, look at that, so. You know, at least it's your truck, not mine. <laughs> yeah, you got insurance? So, uh, Steve was able to put this lift in, uh, what, about a week or so ago? And uh, he got the mezzanine up here, which is pretty sweet. That's gonna be his office area slash hangout slash Yo. let's just drink all day pad. <laughs> <laughs> then of course he's got his uh, his trailer on the other side of the, the camper there. And yeah, there's, uh, this is coming, coming together real well. Do it for Dale. We're gonna be doing something to the truck here today. Something that I should have done, well, when I first got my trailer, because this is gonna make towing a whole heck of a lot easier safer and just just a lot better so i decided to finally get airbags helper bags load lifters whatever you want to call them there it is it's by airlift the load lifter 5000 and this is uh good for 5000 uh, pounds of load leveling support now i also decided to get the wireless air uh system which comes with a compressor and all the wiring and everything like that and then it comes with a little remote that i put inside the vehicle which i can also then take out here and I can set the level that I want the truck to be at uh, when, like I said, I'm towing a trailer or when the truck's not towing anything or when I'm hauling anything in the, in the rear of the bed, something like that. So there's a, a lot of adjustability here, which will be nice. The truck squats pretty hard when it's fully loaded towing a trailer. I wanna be able to level the rear and uh, it's not squatting so bad in the back. This is a 1500, those of you guys that maybe are coming here for the first time and haven't seen me. I am pushing the truck a little bit when the trailer is fully loaded, but it's totally capable of hand handling the uh, the weight. So I just wanted some extra support in the back. There's a lot of things that happen when the truck squats hard in the back. You know, you lose somewhat of your uh, front, like, agility of your steering and everything like that you lose some braking power up front obviously because you're taking the weight off the front and putting more of it in the rear but with these bags here that we're going to put in the back that's going to basically level everything out it'll help eliminate trailer sway it'll just be a more pleasant riding experience and there's one of them right here so basically it'll go on the back i'll show you guys real quick before we start the install and this is the rear right here there's a jounce thing right there and it's gonna replace that, so it'll sit over here, like sort of like that. Then we'll have to mount the air compressor somewhere up here, somewhere hidden. I do have a leveling kit on the front. I don't know if you guys can see that in there, little Supreme Suspensions. It's like a two inch or two and a half inch leveling kit, I forget, but uh, it levels the truck. Obviously from the factory, you know, trucks are a little bit lower in the front than the rear. I wanted it level all the way around. So with these bags being on the back, I don't have to have any air in these bags if I'm not towing anything. If I'm just driving the truck and I want it to be level, I take all the air out of these bags and it's okay because it comes with one of those jounce bumpers. So you don't have to have air in these bags. I think this is the ultimate as opposed to the regular, which doesn't have a jounce uh, bumper, but I decided to get those because I knew I was gonna be running these bags without any air while I'm not towing anything. Guys of that compressor. Yeah, look at that thing, man. <laughs> Heavy duty. Hey, you know what? All it needs to do is fill those bags up with air and keep yeah, them filled. You don't need too much. As nope. said, it's small. It's not going to be something yeah. huge underneath the truck. Oh, we could mount this anywhere. That's, that's the nice thing about it. So there's your little compressor that it comes with, all your lines, and then all your mounting brackets in there for the airbags, which this is specifically for the truck, so it'll bolt right up. Perfect fitment. They have different models, uh, different brackets, obviously, for depending on what model truck or vehicle you have. So yeah, um, I just went on Airlift's website, put my truck information in, and told me the part number that I needed to get, and I went and ordered it. So let's get to install and see how she works out. All right, so. Didn't really show much of this in the time lapse. Basically assembling the airbags themselves with the brackets, putting the little the air things on. Once they're completely assembled, we'll, we'll put them on. I figured I would do a time lapse of the install because it's a lot easier to, I don't have to edit down much for you guys, just run it and kind of just show time lapse music in the background and then I can do more of a review for you guys after everything's installed. There's plenty of install videos on this. In fact, I'm watching one on YouTube right now. It's going a lot faster just watching somebody do this. So uh, if you guys do get this kit, just look on mine for an install bit. Well, the party has been cut short. 
for installing these bags because I ended up getting the wrong kit, did not know, because apparently there are different length brackets for different length beds. I don't know why they would change, I don't know why GM would do such a thing, like change the actual frame where the jounce bumper is, I don't know, but it's different. So there's three different sizes for three different trucks. You gotta figure out what your bed length is, and uh, that's how you basically determine what part number you need from airlift. So these are too short. I'll show you guys, and we've already cracked the beers because you know it's just one of them days. If you look up there, you can see that when you push the bracket up to bolt it up to the, the frame, it actually, it hits that right there. It doesn't go any farther than that because it's hitting the jounce bumper. There's a bumper cup that holds the rubber jounce bumper to weld to the frame. And it's hitting that right now. As you can see, there's space up there. I can fit my finger between the bracket and the frame and that shouldn't be. The bracket should be flush with that. So we just need different brackets. So I've ordered a new kit. It'll be here Monday. But in the meantime, this is all gonna be in the same video. So, but we're gonna get installing the uh, air compressor find a place for that, we're on the airlines, literally get everything ready. So when Monday rolls around, I can come back here and we can finish this up. Uh, won't matter to you guys, it'll all be in the same video. Managed to get the right brackets this time, but instead I went with uh, stainless steel design. Uh, there's uh, stainless steel, these caps here on the end, stainless steel uh, bolts, as you can see there. This truck does go to some pretty harsh uh, weather environments, especially going through work. I mean, I drove it twice to work and there you go. That's what my truck looks like. Salt and sand. Yeah. So you can see where we had installed the air compressor right here, and it's now dirty because uh, I'm going through work and everything like that. But we uh, got the air compressor in. We got everything here. We got the lines ran from the air compressor. They go up through here, and there's a tee off right there. One part goes out to the rear bumper, which I have basically installed these Schrader valves right here. So if the air compressor stops working, I can still fill or deflate the airbags. Steve did the wiring. Uh, I don't really dabble too much in wiring. I just, I don't know. I'm just not very confident in it, but Steve I'm not managed to- any blame at all. <laughs> yeah. He basically uh, took the, the wiring harness. We ran it all the way through, basically up against the driver's side of the frame. If you can see, where's it at? Right here, right there's the harness for the compressor. And it goes all the way, follows this big wiring harness, which is the main harness. Uh, goes all the way up to the engine bay and up through somewhere, I think right there. There it is. There's the other part of it right there. And then hooks to the battery. So right now what we're gonna do is gonna throw the airbags in with the correct brackets. They're gonna sit right there. Then we'll hook all the airlines up to the airbags and uh, test her out. All right, so. The airbags are in, they're bolted up, the airlines are run. So, Steve's gonna lower the truck down. There you can see the airbag fuse in, and there it goes, turn on. I don't hear any leaks anywhere, so we're good. We got the uh, wireless remote now. I should probably read the directions before I start messing around with this thing. Nah, fire up and start pushing buttons. <laughs> Alrighty guys, now that we have the install done, it's the next day, I got the trailer here ready to get hooked up to the truck. We're gonna test these airbags out. I'm gonna uh, test out the wireless remote, kinda just do a demonstration on how this system really works. So I don't have uh, any load on the, the hitch yet. I just have the trailer kinda hovering over there, as you can see. So what I'm gonna do is show you guys how basically different it is from the front uh, wheel gap and the rear. So I've got a camera mounted down there, a little GoPro that's uh, pointing towards the airbag so you guys can see how these things work. So what we're gonna do is right now, we pretty much have an even height here of, let's see, a little less than nine inches, pretty much the same thing there. So we have an exact level front and rear. Now when I put some weight on the hitch, you'll be able to see the airbag compress because it's putting a lot of load on the tongue of the truck. So there we have all the weight off the trailer right now and onto the truck hitch. Lock this up because we're gonna go for a ride here after we demonstrate how to level off the rear. So now if I measure, we got almost seven and a half inches in the back, nine and a half up front, not a much of a difference, but it's, it's more the rear that uh, we lost 
about an inch and a half in the rear. The trailer is, does not have a car in it, by the way. It is uh, it's an empty trailer for the most part. I'd have some stuff in the cabinets, but once it's loaded, it's a little bit worse than it is right now. What I'm gonna do is grab my remote inside the truck. As you can see inside here, it's kind of like a garage door opener, and this will control the airbag uh, pressure. Right now it has five PSI. That's the minimum uh, PSI you can have in the bags at a time, which is pretty much nothing. Uh, so we'll take it to 15. See the truck raise up. Marty Motoring is here, a little cameo. He's gonna put the tape measure on there. We'll see it raise. So we'll take her up to uh, 25 PSI. Right now we're at about seven and three quarter inches. We wanna be back up at around, it's like nine inches I think it was. I, I think so. Yeah. yeah. So we'll I take it up like to 25. Remember. They're up to eight. There it stops, so we'll take it up a little more. 35 PSI. And I think around nine should be good. That's eight and three quarters. Let's check the front, see what the front looks like. Yeah, nine and a half still. Okay, let's go back here, raise it up again. Right now we're at 35 PSI, so 45 PSI. And that's tech right past nine, so let's, let's check the front again. Still at what, nine and a half almost? Yeah. We'll try, 10 more PSI should do it, I think. So we'll hit it up to see if it goes to 55. Yep, it does. Okay, so we're a little over nine and a quarter, so. Something I forgot to mention is you can individually adjust each side as well as by each PSI. Right now it's just set for uh, 5, 15, 25, 35, and so on. What do we got there? It's like, uh, it's dead even, over. right? Now you guys can hear it. It's gonna kick on every now and then if it uh, needs to fill up, you know, depending on temperature and everything like that, which is nice so it'll consistently keep it at the right PSI. So yeah. We're a little bit higher in the rear than the front. We can lower it down, let's say five PSI, and see what that does. So 50 on each side. What do we got now? Oh yeah, that's good. Yeah, this is like... That's perfect, huh? Pretty much the same. Yeah, so there we go. So 50 PSI looks like the empty trailer uh, setting. That looks good. That that truck is now level. It should drive better. We're gonna go on a drive here real quick and check it out. Now, the trailer did raise up in the front as compared to the back, which what we're gonna end up doing is correcting that by getting a drop hitch. As you can see, this is just a straight out hitch, one of those like universal ones, but I'm gonna go ahead and get, go in there. We'll, we'll measure and figure out how much the trailer raised up front, and then that's the amount of drop hitch that I would need to get. Let's go take it for a ride and see how it is. Alrighty, so we're turning on the highway right now. We're gonna see how the uh, airbags work. See if I notice a difference from not having them and now having them. I also have my camera still hooked up to the rear of the truck with the airbag view. And uh, if you notice, going over, I mean, we're just hitting a little bit of bumps. The highway is fairly, fairly level right now, so it's not doing too much. The trailer, when it's empty, is actually worse because it likes to, it's like a sail, right? It's an aluminum trailer, so it's really light. And when it's empty, it's just a big sail, so the truck likes to kind of sway back and forth when I'm doing like highway speeds. But right now, I don't really feel anything like that yet. Um, I don't think I will as bad. That's pretty much the point of these airbags. I can also tell that it's a lot more solid in the rear. So we're hitting some bumps now, as you can see. And really, it doesn't feel any different than if I was not towing a trailer. Sometimes when I go over bumps with a trailer hooked up, it's like you're getting, <laughs> it's like you're getting air. It's like I'm taking flight, but uh, that wasn't too bad. So we have hit some traffic, but um, like I said, this this system's definitely making a world of difference in terms of like when I'm hitting bumps, with the exception of the truck being kind of, you know, feeling like you're towing something and pulling something. Uh, I don't really feel a difference suspension wise. Like it's like, like I still feel like I have the truck under complete control as if I didn't have a trailer hooked up to it. Now with the leaf spring setup that I have on it, with the Rancho shocks, without the airbags, you can pretty much feel every bump. In fact, I feel the bump in the front of the truck, but when it hits the rear tire, I don't really feel it as much. Do you notice that too? Yeah. Definitely a worthy investment, honestly, for anybody towing a trailer. Uh, now, obviously, if you have like an F350 or a 3500 Chevy, you probably don't need them. I just have a regular 1500, Z71 Silverado, so it has the off-road shocks and package. I do have a trailer package on the truck, so I got the trailer brakes that are integrated here. Is the truck a little underpowered? A little bit, yeah. It only has the 5.3 V8 instead of the 6.2, but it's not a huge deal because I can still tow just fine. The addition of these helper bags or load leveling bags or whatever you want to call them, airbags, they're definitely very useful. It gives a softer ride as well. Maybe your truck squats a lot and you're pulling a big trailer. 
this is something that you might want to invest in. Alrighty guys, so back at home now, and what I did not get on that video was later that evening, the uh, driver's side airbag started to leak, and uh, it was completely deflated. The passenger side airbag was fine, uh, if you notice, actually in this clip, if I do a time lapse, you can actually see, I have a video of it just like slowly just deflating. So I ended up pulling over to see what was the issue and I couldn't find any leaks or anything like that. I was like, what the heck, what's, what's going on here? After checking everything and all the lines, I noticed that the line that went from the compressor over to the driver's side airbag was actually sagging right directly above the exhaust pipe and it ended up touching it and melting it. So that's why the driver's side airbag lost all of the air. The passenger side was fine. I didn't want to drive home on a completely deflated airbag. Now they say you can because it has a jounce bumper in it, but I also had a lot of load on the truck. So like that one was just smushed and I didn't want to really drive too far on it and damage it. So I ended up going to Pep Boys, getting a few things, got some like heat wrap and a cutter for the lines. And I ended up just fixing it right there in the parking lot and wrapped it real nice. I drove it around today. It was fine. Everything was good, seemed to work well. And I think what I'm gonna do is end up just wrapping the exhaust around the areas where the airlines are. So if they do manage to touch the exhaust pipe again, they won't melt. Now, even though this video was literally four days in the making, the first two days were the install, third day would have been the review part of it, and I was gonna try to finish the outro like I'm doing now that same day, but unfortunately the one airline melted, so we were, ran into that issue. But finally, we got it all done, and I have nothing honestly but positive things to say about the system because it works exactly like it's supposed to. I'm pretty excited to use it this year uh, when I'm towing the, towing the car. Something I should have done when I got the trailer, I'm not gonna lie, I can't believe I drove around the country literally well at least on the east coast for an entire year without having these on so i checked my p.o box the other day and i want to give a shout out here to david gonzalez he sent me a letter he's from uh monroe new york and he says my name is daniel gonzalez i'm 11 years old he's got a youtube channel dg8296 it says his dad's work mechanic has car shows every wednesday in the summer and he's actually hoping for me to come I uh, love the vids, keep them up, and maybe bring the Freedom Rocket, question mark. Well then, I appreciate the letter. I love going to car shows, that's for sure, events, stuff like that. I like traveling, but we'll see how my schedule works out. Maybe send me a message on Instagram and uh, I'll see when it is or where it is. If you guys wanna contact me or send me anything and have a chance to be featured at the end of a video, a P.O. Box information will be below in the description. So thanks for watching this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're coming here for the first time and that notification bell to always be notified when I upload a video. And as always, have a great day. So what do you think of the air system? I think I need to get one in for my old lady's tits. That's what I think. <laughs>